doesn't it? Yeah. Arguably, uh, Scotland's greatest painter, Sir Henry Rayburn, was born in 1756 and died in 1823, and moved into this building around 1799. Um, and he didn't just move in and occupy, he actually specified some significant changes to the architecture. Uh, he wanted it to be a, uh, it's a three-story townhouse, but he wanted it to be somewhere where he could entertain his friends, and perhaps prospective portrait clients, and spec the studio in such a way that it was perfect for his purposes. And I think he did a wonderful job. It was here that he painted some of his greatest portraits, including the McNabb and MacDonnell of Glengarry. But we're actually not here for Henry Rayburn, but for another famous Scottish painter, my grandfather Samuel John Peplow, who worked here around a hundred years later. Is that St. Stephen's Church Hall? It's, no, that's the one in Bell, Bellevue Crescent. Yeah, okay. It sticks up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you've got a wonderful view over to the islands of Perth and Forth. And the old one there, is that where we go? Yes. The towns are just over there. So we and you've got the, 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 the grounds of gas on it. I don't know how you like this. Well, I'm delighted to be joined today by David Eustace, um, Scotland's favourite photographer and a significant cultural commentator. And um, recalling it was about a year or so ago that David and I rediscovered this building in the Rayburn studio. And David formed a fantastic plan to reinvigorate and revisit the, the extraordinary cultural history that this building and the studio represents. I'd be pleased that David might say a word or two about, about that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, uh, uh, it's something I think that we can something, and, uh, and it's generally done with all innocence, I would like to think that we, complacency is a cancer, and I think sometimes in this country, when I say this country, I've in the UK in general, we can sometimes lose sight of the threads of the plot, and, and they can be living in the next motives, we don't. And it's just like when you and I started talking about, you know, let's do a project in, in conjunction with reality, and I don't know how it came about, but it was one of these sort of serendipity things where one thing happens and it leads you down another route and it takes you down another road. And then I remember sitting one night thinking, I wonder if Ray Bunch could still be over and where did, where did the SJ Petro pay and, and you know, things like, where, where did these guys work? And when I found it out, and then thankfully we research with, with me and we'll get access to this place. Uh, so it, it's the, the project. Primarily, what I was trying to focus my mind, and it's not completely formulated as yet, but there's something that fascinates me that, that, that stretches over time, that continues, and it doesn't change that much. It does change, but at such a, such a rate, and I find it quite interesting. I was at a dinner, I got invited to a dinner, and I was fortunate I was invited to this. Uh, and I was sitting in one of the rooms up at the, the High Court. And I was looking at the old paintings, and I was just reading the report, and it was that thing that all just fell out of place. I thought, wouldn't it be lovely to make a body of work? And it's, it's actually not really about the people who get it. It's more about the position and the responsibility and the hope and the tradition uh, and the belief. So I thought, you know, that there's a perfect place to capture these, what would you call it, servants of the people at the time or the hopes of the people at the time. Uh, and aesthetically and visually, you know, the, 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 I, I love that regalia as well, I love that. And that transcends time to a certain extent, it's not fashionable. Uh, I'm fortunate, you know, had a, a, a chat with uh, some of the law lords involved and they, they very hoped it so, and then locked out. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. So, we'll I think it's a, it's a fantastic idea, because Raymond also painted some of the great judges well, that's it, yeah. Yeah. in his era. So it's revisiting that. And that, right. that's, the, that's the essence of it for me, yeah. is that's the link as well. It's the same, it is the same quality of light. It will be the same building. I mean, it's whitewashed in here now, or, you know, but it will be the same essence, it will be the same depth to light. And, and, and dare I say, it will be the same sort of spirit of it, you know what I mean? That's what I like.
Well, we're standing in the, the body of, of the studio, and uh, we brought in uh, S.J. Pepper's original easel. And on it, uh, we placed a self-portrait. The portrait was probably made a year or so before he actually occupied the studio. He came around about 1904, 1905, and he was here for four or five years. And um, we were just remarking uh, to, to David about how it looks rather stark, painted white today. But this period of my grandfather's painting was known as the White Period, and it was uh, in the studio that he painted his famous model, Peggy McRae, some of those extraordinary pictures of her posed in the interior with the sofa, and, and so on and so forth. This picture was probably painted in his previous studio in Devon Place uh, at near Haymarket. And it's a terrific, it's a terrific image though. And the idea of him painting uh, in that way, I think, was suitable for today's film. So he moved studio several times in, in his life, and each, each studio move uh, forms, if, if you like, a sort of a discrete period in his development of an artist. So Raymond's studio, the white period, at the end of this, of course, he, uh, his next move was to Paris and the studio at 278 Boulevard Raspail in Montparnasse. Now, one of the things, do you feel like, do you feel a connection with, a greater connection? I don't mean, I mean, you're, you're going to have, obviously, blood links there and there and it's passed down through your father, blah, blah, blah. But standing in this space, do you feel more of a, this is where he actually stood yeah. and he painted and this, I would imagine here or there the model would have been in the yeah. corner. You know, and the easel may have sat there. Yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. It would have been simply furnished, it would have been a model's throne, perhaps a, a sofa, his easel. Uh, and of course this fantastic uh, light that comes in, north light, with four adjustable um, shutters. So it would have been a fantastic space to work in. And, uh, but the answer question is, is yes. I don't think you can actually talk about something or write about something until you've, you've stood there, until you've kind of understood, you've, you've shared the floor space, if you like. Yep. And that to me is, is a wonderful connection. You know, it's, it's a long time ago now, but it's, it's a real connection. It's something that I really, I really do appreciate. How does it make you think that he would have, at one point, you know, leaned against that, those shutters or the, the window frame and just looked at the same window? On the same view by and large. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's very simple things yeah. like that. And I'd have been allowed in. If I'd been a and, and, grandkid, I'd have been allowed in. And, and, and he probably would have had many of the same concerns, worries, and enjoyments that you've got. Do yes, you know I mean, I mean the, the, the life comes in units of days, doesn't it? Yeah. You've got good day, bad day, the model doesn't turn up, the light's awful. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it, it's a washout. Art's a serious business, but it's also, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's full of ups and downs. Um, but, for a great artist, obviously the legacy is there in the work and it's fantastic.